friends. Today I wanted to continue our conversation about knowing the difference between the Lord inspiring you to do something and your own anxieties, fears, or emotions. And I happen to be listening to a book right now. It is called Why Isn't God Answering Me by Gerald N. Lund. And um, I started listening to it a couple of days ago because I'm kind of a little bit obsessed with this topic right now of just understanding our relationship with God, how we receive personal revelation, how we can stop from being confused. So I highly recommend um, learning from him. But just to kind of get you going on a thought process here and to get you maybe thinking about this a little deeper. Um, in chapter eight today, he talked about um, emotions, strong emotions. And he started out with an example about when you have packed up and you're going away on vacation and you get a couple blocks down the road and you go, I left the iron on, I left the garage door open, I, whatever it is. Um, and so you aren't sure. Is that a prompting? Is it not? You turn around, you go home, and you realize, nope, the iron's not on. Nope, the garage door isn't open. And then you suddenly remember you checked twice before you left. But you had this strong feeling. So now what do you do with that? How do you know the difference between strong feelings and emotions and a prompting from the Lord through the Spirit? Um, and um, he gives three ways that you can tell the difference because we have counterfeit revelation. Um, and it is the spiritual part of us and the emotional part of us are so closely linked um, that it's possible to mistake emotional impulse for something spiritual. And so those three ways that you can tell the difference are, number one, first, we want it so badly. It demands our thoughts and feelings. Um, and it's almost impossible at that point to turn our will over to the Lord. Okay. And then number two, we believe having strong feelings proves it comes from God. Who's ever thought that? Number three, self-centered and selfish. Our needs, wants, desires, priorities are put ahead of those of others or of God. And this dulls our spiritual senses. So those are three ways that you can tell um, that you should be saying, wait a minute, here's my, here's my test, those three things. Um, and then he goes on to give what I feel like is a really relevant example that we seem to forget. A lot of us have children and we take our kids to the store and they throw the biggest fit over this is something I need to have so bad. Here's all the reasons why. And if you don't get it for me, I am going to die. I will die. And you don't get it for them. And in fact, they don't die. And so then the next time you're at the store and they're throwing an even bigger fit, and this is for real this time, I am going to die because you point out to them that you didn't die last time. Um, no, for sure, for real this time, I will die. Well, we somehow forget as adults that we have that same tendency. We want something so bad, we're gonna die. Or if because I want it, it must be right, it must be good. Um, and I, I see a lot of people falling into this trap and tell me things like, God sent me this other person in my life so I could leave my spouse. And I have such strong feelings about this. I wouldn't have strong feelings if it wasn't something God wanted me to do. And my first test always is, is it against a commandment? Is it moral? Is it ethical? If it's not, God didn't tell you to do it. You told you to do it. Your strong emotions told you to do it. Or you've received counterfeit revelation 
from the adversary. The adversary knows our emotional triggers. He knows how to get us to be confused and to throw all reason, logic, and knowledge of God's plan out the door because we want it so bad we're going to die. Um, and so strong feelings, the take home message for you today is strong feelings are not the test, they come from the Lord. We feel strongly about all kinds of things that aren't good. It feels so right, it can't be wrong. And then he talked, he gave this quote from uh, President Eyring, and it says that he has had many prayers answered, and they were most clear when what I wanted was silented by an overpowering need to know what God wanted. It is then that an answer from a loving Heavenly Father can be spoken to the mind in a still small voice and can be written on the heart. And so that is your true test right there. And I hope that got you excited to find out more because there's so much more to consider. Um, so many things that get in the way of our ability to communicate with God. And he wants to communicate with us. But we've got a lot of stuff going on um, that we need to overcome in our lives to learn how to communicate. And it is so crucial in our day and age. And this is why I'm obsessed with it, because it is so impossible to know truth without revelation. And it's going to become even more difficult as technology continues to evolve to be able to know the difference between truth and fiction. And we are going to need revelation like we need air um, in order to survive spiritually, to make it back home to our Father in Heaven where He wants us. He wants us to figure this out. He has given us lots of awesome people like Gerald and Lund to, to help us figure this out. And so hopefully that gets somebody interested in figuring this out too. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.